What is going on, everybody? What is going on, everybody? My name is Jeff Lightsey Jr. here with the Black Boss Channel and Victory Formation. Thank you guys for tuning in. We have a special guest in the building today, one of the newest Jackson State football recruits commit, Mr. Tyler Brown. Tyler, how's it going, buddy? I'm doing wonderful. I cannot complain. Just so happy to be on the show today. Hey, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for coming on, Tyler. Tyler is a Jackson, Mississippi native, so Tyler, just talk to me about choosing JSU. I know you had some other offers, but what does it mean for you to choose Jackson State and go back home to play in front of your hometown? Well, it's, it's a huge honor. So my, my, I'm a legacy. So my mom graduated from Jackson State. My grandparents graduated from Jackson State. My uncle graduated from Jackson State. So to be able to play where my entire family went to school in front of the home crowd, just it's a blessing. It's a huge honor for me. And just I love Coach Prime. I love how down to earth Coach Markison is and just how much he loves his players, not only as his players, but as human beings. I just I love the atmosphere. I love the fans. I love how can you not love the sonic boom of the South? You know, I grew up going to Jackson State games. So to be able to be there yesterday, was, it was electric. Was oh, electric. man. Yeah, that, that's awesome. Like, tell I was going to ask you that, man. What, what was your first introduction to Jackson State? You're Jackson native. So what, what's it like growing up in Jackson? What was your first introduction to JSU, the school, the football, all that stuff? So I grew up wearing JSU stuff. My mom <laughs> from a young age has in Jackson State gear going to the game. So it, it was I, I always loved growing up in Jackson. You know, I think Jackson gets that really bad stereotype of being this terrible city. And I just, I don't think it's true. I, the people are wonderful, sweet, kind, down to earth. The food's amazing. The Jackson State's culture is amazing. The fans are wonderful. I love how into the games they are. And just, you know, I, I love the interaction. I love the players. I love the, the Jackson State. It just, it feels like home. And that was for me through this whole recruiting process was I wanted to find a place that felt like home. So I didn't really have a set number of visits I was taking. I was just going to take the visit until I found the one. And Jackson State was my first visit. And it, just happened. it was it was the one. So that's why I ended up picking Jackson State. Now, take me back to your high school playing days in Jackson, Mississippi. What was the recruiting process for you like in high school? Uh, I know we talked a little bit off camera, but what was it like? Did Jackson State recruit you? Like, what, what was that like during your high school tenure and then led you to choose uh, UL Monroe? I mean, UL Lafayette. Sorry about that. Yeah, no problem. Uh, okay, so it was about my junior year. Funny, it was my junior year. It was the middle of a basketball game, and I said, you know what? I really want to play college football. So wow. I, was, I, was, I was really late to the game. Um, I was I, I didn't know I was late to the game. I had no idea how any of the recruiting process worked. So I ended up going to all those camps that summer. My very first offer was from Jones Community College from Barney Farrar, and I absolutely love Coach Farrar. He's an amazing human being, a great guy. I so that was my first offer, and we've been close ever since. And um, after that, so that's when I started to get a bunch of JUCO offers. And my very first Division One offer was actually UL Lafayette. So I went to a camp. It was a Mississippi College camp. So it was Mississippi College, UL Lafayette, South Alabama, and I think it was one other school that was there. And it was a camp that I found out about last minute, and my teammate was like, man, you should go. So just out of – I didn't really want to go at first, but I was like, you know what, let me go. Let me see what I can do. And I ended up going, and – that's where I met Coach Sale, and I met the late great DJ Looney, and I also that's when Coach Napier he used to he used to go to the camps in person. And that was he he um I met I met all three of them there as well, and I had a great camp there. And after the camp, uh, Coach Napier came up to my mom and he said, "I didn't know why I ended up in Jackson, Mississippi today, but now <laughs> I know it was to meet your son. Wow, and your son was the best one out there." So, then two days later, they called me and they offered me. Um, and that was my first Division One offer. I was super excited. I also received offers from Southern Miss when Coach Hobson was there, and then Jackson State. It was the two staffs before Coach Prime. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the offensive line coach at the time. I, I really can't think of his name, but he he came up to he came to uh, St. Joe and he offered me his full scholarship, and that was really really exciting. And as I said, the staff was let go, and Coach Looney, uh, the late Coach Looney, he was the one that recruited me to UL. Came to my house just. Came to a bunch of St. Joe games, and he was—he's proved to me that he wanted me there. Mm -hmm. I did—I wanted to go somewhere where I was wanted, and I knew I could flourish, and that's why I ended up picking UL Lafayette over those two. Absolutely, absolutely. Once again, we're talking to Tyler Brown, one of the latest commitments to Jackson State. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button. Now, Tyler, talk to me about the process of the transfer portal. We've heard, you know, horror stories from the transfer portal. We've heard some amazing stories from the transfer portal. What, what was your experience like? 
overwhelming. <laughs> you know, that's the biggest wow. thing. It was, it was it was really overwhelming. It was so humbling. You know, I I tried to tell every coach, I'm so thankful that you reached out and that you mm-hmm. you know saw my film, love what you saw, and it was just it was a very humbling and just incredible experience. It was it was overwhelming too, trying to juggle class and answering all the phone calls and text wow. messages and. So, so run that for my audience that don't know. Like, what, what's, what, what do you mean juggling the phone calls? What, explain okay. that to us. So on Twitter, so they have to, to, to do everything legally, they have to go through your, on your Twitter. They DM you on, they follow you, and then you follow them back, and then they DM you on Twitter. And then, okay, say, okay can I see your film? So my sister, she's the tech savvy one, so she made, okay. me, she made me a YouTube film link so they could see all my eight minutes of film from the 10 games I played in the, during the COVID year. Okay. Uh, so that they made, they made, uh, my sister made the film and they watched the film and they say, okay, can I have your phone number? So I give them my phone number. They end up calling me and then it's like, we love what we saw. We want to build a relationship. And then most of the time they end up offering me. I had 11 offers, thankfully, uh, out of the transfer portal. And I was extremely thankful for every last one of them. Uh, it's just the call. It got so overwhelming to a point that I kind of <laughs> had to shut it down. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, man. That I mean, that's that's pretty crazy. Like, like I said, I, I've never I've talked to a bunch of recruits and a bunch of football players from high school to transfers or whatever. But I I, I didn't know that the process of the transfer portal, the, the the Twitter, the DM, and the sending of the film that that is that I can imagine in juggling class, in juggling your life. You know what I mean? Like you still have a a young man, you're still a young man, you still have a life. That is that is pretty pretty overwhelming. I could see. So you said you had the eleven offers. You went to the JSU spring game. You visited Jackson State. Just talk to me about the staff, how they recruited you. What was you know what was their pitch so for for you to come down back home and join the Jackson State football team? Well, uh, so it was Coach Markison. I really, really, I spoke with Coach Markison, and I call him Coach B. He's the offensive coordinator, Coach B, and Coach Markison a lot. Okay, and they just said, Coach Markison called me every day. He's talking <laughs> every day. You know, and I, I love that. I I love that. You know, I love the the schools that really that pursue you like that because to me it shows you that they really want you so i love talking to coach marcuson and uh just building a relationship with him each and every day and just i loved i could feel his energy i could feel he was really down to earth he was a good human being he was he just seemed like such a great guy and just being able to sit down with him in person watch film with coach b and him was just it was perfect it was perfect for me now, when did when did JSU get into the picture? We know you committed on on spring game, the day of the spring game. But when did JSU first reach out to you? Uh, when did they get in the picture in your recruiting? They reached out to me the first day I was in the transfer portal. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, so they were they were one of the they were they jumped the gun really really early. Uh, and I went on my official visit to JSU two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. And then I well after that I had so much schoolwork to do that I didn't really have time to you know. <laughs> But now, but our spring break was really late, so this past week was my spring break. So I was yeah. able to come down for the spring game, you know, be with the coaching staff again. Uh, I I met Coach Prime and uh, Shador to the two weeks ago, so that was that was, mm-hmm. it was really cool getting to meet them. Um, they seemed like such down to earth people, and it was just, you know, just it was. It, we, it, I always knew. I told every coach that asked me, you know, what are you looking for, and I mm-hmm. said it's a gut feeling for me. I feel like you'll know what's the right spot for you without having to listen to the fancy words or listening mm-hmm. to all, you know. So that's yeah, yeah. For me. yeah. Now that's understandable. Once again, we're talking to Tyler Brown, the latest JSU commit or one of the latest JSU commits. It was a slew of you guys on the day of the spring game. Talk to me about that spring game, man. I mean, there was some fireworks. They had the, they laid out the red carpet. It was a lot going on down there in Jackson. What was that like for you? It was wonderful. It was just, it was so overwhelming. That's how wonderful it was. Uh, it was, it was awesome. You know, just the band, the sonic boom. It, they had me one ready to go out there right now to go play. And I haven't signed <laughs> my papers yet, but uh, just, it was a wonderful experience. Just being with the guys in the locker room. They, 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 they seem like really great people, great guys. They seem, they, they have a brotherhood that I, I love. Uh, the coaches, it was awesome. You know, they, they were stressing. They were kind of running back and forth while we were on the I side. Bet. You know, the sideline <laughs> was packed and, uh, it was just, it was, it was, it was, it was incredible. That's the best. Way to it. it was incredible. Absolutely, man. They had the ESPN cameras out there. Coach Prime was mic'd up. They were interviewing him during the game. It was, I mean, just from someone who watched on TV, it looked like a spectacle, man. It really looked like they did it up right. Uh, Tyler, for, for those who don't know, you played at UL Monroe. You, you missed most of last season with an injury. For, for the JSU fans, how are you coming with your recovery? How is things going on that end? 
Oh, I play. I play at UL Lafayette under coach. You I keep saying ULM, man. That's my so bad. I'm sorry. That's, our, that's our, <laughs> that was UL's rival with UL. Yeah, I just, yeah, I've got to clear that up. My bad. <laughs> but you know, so I ended up. I had I tore both my labrums and my shoulders, and mm. it's not it's 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 a very common injury for offensive linemen, but it's mm -hmm. not well. It's it's. A, they always say that eventually you're going to tear your shoulders because you're constantly striking, you're constantly yeah. hitting full force. So I end up tearing my labrums, partially tearing both my labrums and my right and left shoulder. And now I'm 100 percent recovered. I had my first surgery September 20th and my next surgery December 10th. And before, thankfully, three weeks before my JSU visit, I was 100 percent cleared by the doctor. Awesome. So that was just it was wonderful. You know, it was it was really hard. I, that was the hardest period of my life, not being able to play football, not being able to go out and do what I love. Uh, on a daily basis and just kind of having to sit there on the sidelines and watch. So that was that was really, really hard and it was really humbling. And it really made me be grateful for the opportunities that I did have and be thankful and more appreciative because just like that, at any point in time, football could be over with, you know. And You're right about that, man. You're right about that. That's that's an awesome story. I'm glad you're 100 percent healthy. Trust me, the JSU fans are glad you were 100 percent healthy. Uh, Tyler, I want to ask you. JSU, we know, I mean, even after watching the spring game, and just no offense to everybody that's on the current roster, but they need some help on the line. Uh, what can you bring to that offense, to the offensive line group, and hopefully on the field this fall at Jackson State? You know, I think, uh, like you said, it's – I'm just so thankful I get the opportunity to go out there and help them, you know, I, to help them get better. Because I think I'm a firm believer our saying at UL Lafayette was five equals one. Mm -hmm. You know, we are we're one unit, five guys in one unit. So we have to be one heartbeat, one sound. We have to be on key, on point, ready to go each and every down. And I'm, I love I run like blocking. It. Run blocking is my specialty. I, of mm -hmm. course, like, okay. I can pass block my tail off for as long as I need to and give Shador as much time as possible. But I love run blocking. There is no greater joy than moving a man from point A to point B <laughs> without, you know, without him just moving him from point against a to his point. will yeah just bullying him, <laughs> bullying him. you know so i'm bringing a nastiness a tenacity toughness to that group and hopefully leadership i really want it i want those guys to i want everybody to be to get better each day and every single day so though i'm a firm believer in how you practice is how you're going to play so if you practice hard you give 100 percent effort in practice you're going to give 100 percent effort in the game if you're lazy in practice you're going to be lazy in the game Habits from practice show up in the game. So I'm a firm believer in taking everything seriously from weights to film mm -hmm. to recovery. Um, I'm a guy that's always going to go in and do the extra after workouts or after practice, get an extra lift in, get an extra run in, because I just want to stay in tip-top shape, ready to go. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. Once again, we are talking to one of the latest JSU commits, Mr. Tyler Brown. Now, Tyler, we know Jackson State brought in six offensive linemen or according, you know, roughly six offensive linemen during this recruiting period. You know, they have their guys that were there from last year. When you're being recruited by a team that seems to have a lot of players on the roster that play your position or in your position group it what what is that like how, how do you look at competition in that way when you see a bunch of guys have already signed but you decide hey you know i want to go there too i think i can you know i think i could take their spot essentially yeah. <laughs> well it, i love competition i'm a competitive mm -hmm. person everyone in my house is competitive my mom was a dandy dozen softball player in illinois uh, okay she's mm -hmm. a dandy dozen all-american softball player so well, i grew up in a competitive household you know I'm a I'm a Chicago Bears and Bulls fan. So Bears, Bulls, and Cubs. My mom's from Illinois. I was gonna say you Chicago through and through on the sports team. Through and through, and this Michael <laughs> Jordan, uh, Michael Jordan, how he approached everything he did with a competitive edge and competitive nature. That's why I grew up idolizing. I grew up idolizing Michael Jordan. Mm -hmm. So for me, competition is either gonna make you better, it's gonna make you worse. And I love competition. You know. Uh, I'm not I didn't really care who signed, who didn't sign, because at the end of the day, my only competition is with myself. Can Absolutely. I be better than the man I was yesterday? And that's why I even spoke with Coach Martison about that. I'm not worried about I don't I don't care who's in front, who's behind, who's next to me, because I'm going to outwork the guy I was. The, I work everybody and I work the man I was yesterday. Absolutely, man. I, I love to hear that. I love to hear that spirit. I know the JSU fans that'll be tapped in will love to hear that kind of stuff as well. Now, Tyler, has the staff kind of told you what position you'll be playing? Will you be at the center, at guard position? Which which one and, and which one do you prefer, actually? Well, Coach Napier made sure before in our, our last spring that I learned how to snap the football. He said, okay. <laughs> <"Do> you <want laughs> hey, if you watch the spring game, you understand why the men's while we're laughing like this. <laughs> 
he want me to have as much experience as possible. He want me to be able to play everywhere. Uh, they want me to play guard, but he said that he wants me to be his utility player, so play wherever he needs me to play. So that's mm-hmm. just what I want to do. At UL, I played right guard. I played left guard. I snapped a little bit. Just wherever he needs me to play, that's where I'm going to be. Absolutely, man. And, and like you said, it's about having – just putting the five best guys out there. Exactly. Like if you're one of the five best guys, I mean, that is what they need. The run block – hearing you say you love to run block is critical because JSU has to improve their run blocking now. Obviously, they have to improve their pass blocking, but they need to improve that O-line. And, and that's not that's not knocking on anybody that's already there. That's just the truth. I mean, we, we heard Coach. Coach said after the season last year – there's guys that are going to be replaced. He yeah. said even during uh, during the TV broadcast, obviously you were there, but during the TV broadcast, he was like, yo, we still got to go get some more guys to replace them because this is unacceptable. And to hear you say like, hey, I'm coming in. I don't care who's there. I, I know the fan base loves to hear that. Now, Tyler, I- I'll get you out of here. Just a few more questions, man. I- what what would it mean to J- Jackson State? has done something for HBCU football, what Coach Prime has been able to do at Jackson State. Just what impact did that have on you in choosing Jackson State, the impact of HBCU football across this country, what Coach Prime has been able to do at JSU? How did that affect your recruiting? I wanted to make it – I wanted to go somewhere where I can make a difference and make history Mm -hmm. and to be able to play a small part in helping HBCU football go back to – you know, to bring it back to its glory days, to to make it great again. Uh, Coach Prime's already taken giant steps to make that happen. Just for me to help that along the way, that's just that's what I feel like I was called to do. Mm. Um, I, of course, I watched the celebration bowl like every other Jackson State fan. <laughs> so I, I, you know, I saw everything I needed to see, and I just I had a feeling even then that I knew that if I was to enter the portal, that would that would definitely be one of my top spots to mm. consider. If they considered me, and thankfully they considered me a, a great football player. Um, but I just I want to I just want to be part of something special, you know. Um, I'm an offense as an offensive lineman, you know. We don't really get too much credit. Our name's not called much. We I guess you could say we can we're underappreciated a lot of times because you know we're not we're not catching the passes, we're not running the football, but we're doing the dirty work. We're doing the thing that needs to be done for the team to win. And I'm just I also want to do whatever I can to help the team win, whatever whatever role I need to be in. That's what I want to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Once again, talking to Tyler Brown, one of the latest Jackson State commits. Now, Tyler, I, I want to ask you this. You said you watched the Celebration Bowl uh, and, and you and I'm sure being a Jackson native, you kept tabs on JSU when it comes to the exposure that the players over at Jackson State are getting. How, how does I mean, I understand you're an offensive lineman. And like you said, sometimes O linemen don't get the proper recognition a lot of times we only talk about online when they're doing something bad right, right? We, we rarely we yeah. like harp on them when they're doing something bad but when they're doing the job really really well it's kind of like oh that's what you're supposed to do eh, what is that it's it's harder than it sounds just what is the exposure been like or what do you think the exposure will be like for you at jackson state how will do you think you'll be able to capitalize on those opportunities because we know nil is a thing now like I, i'm trying to help as many guys you know get paid as much as possible did that weigh into your decision at all or like no. how does that feel you it really didn't honestly one of the biggest factors for me my three biggest factors were is it an area where my family can come watch me play every every mm-hmm. single game because my grandparents i live with my mom and mm-hmm. a single mom and my grandparents are much older now and i, I knew i didn't want to go somewhere where they have to do all this traveling to come see me mm-hmm. and two i just wanted to gel with the offensive line coach build a beautiful build build a great relationship with him and just three for me is I wanted to go somewhere where I can make a difference. So NIL really didn't play an impact for me, mm-hmm. but I just I love seeing when I'm in town, seeing everybody repping their Jackson State clothes, repping their Jackson, repping their school. You know, their spirit, their soul here, their spirit here. Their people love their Tigers, and I love that. And I was I, I'm I'm big on community service and helping people, and wherever mm-hmm. I just wherever I can help make a positive impact somewhere, that's what I'd love to do. Whether it's through NIL opportunity or service opportunities, that's just, that's just, that's who I am as a person. I just, I love yeah. helping and love doing what I can. I love, I love wearing my school. That's so. awesome, man. Hey, that that's really awesome to hear you say that because everybody didn't have that in mindset. And to hear you say that, especially for a community that you grew up in to want to give back to them. Hey, that, that is going to mean the world to them. Speaking of meaning the world to someone, what, how did your family feel when you told them like, Hey, you know, I got all these offers. 
but I think I'm choose, I'm gonna I'm gonna stay home. I'm gonna play at Jackson State. How was how what was mom's reaction? What was the grandparents' reaction? What was that like? Oh, they were all so excited and happy because they they said, of course, my uh, my family said, you know, it's my decision. Wherever you go, we're gonna come support you. Whether it's all the way in Indiana or in Kansas or at one of the other places I was offered, they said we just wanted to come support you. And I was just so thankful for that. Of course, it's just like I said, it was the gut feeling. So they were all cheering, happy, excited, ready to go. Because again. My entire family graduated from here. I'm a legacy. So it means a lot to come here. And like I said, I, I told this story yesterday. My great grandfather, um, my, my grandfather, he, uh, they, he grew up on 806 Canal Street, which is where the apartments are now, the nice, nicer apartment buildings um, mm -hmm. near Jackson State's campus. He grew up, my grandfather, they grew up without cars. So my Every graduation for Jackson State, my, grand, my great grandfather would put on his nicest suit and he'd walk. To watch those kids graduate because it, it meant something to him to see African Americans be successful, to get their diplomas to be successful. It meant something to him. And he went to every single graduation. Wow. But he unfortunately passed away the year before my grandfather was able to graduate. Mm. Um, and that was all, it's always been such a special story to me because I've, I'm, I, he has the best seat in the house to watch me play for his school and to graduate from his school. And that's just, it's special. It means something for me. It, I always wanted to play somewhere in Mississippi if that was the path God chose for me. And to be able to do that for the school that my family graduated from, it's, it means something. You know, that's, I wanted to go somewhere where it meant something to me and then nothing's bigger than Jackson State for me, so. Hey, man, that is a remarkable story to hear, Tyler. You almost made me shed a tear, man. I don't know if you was going for that, but that was that was awesome, man. That that is so that that's really that's a really special story that and a special connection that your family has with this university. And now the fact that you'll be able to wear that Jackson State a jersey, you'll be able to get that diploma from Jackson State. I know will mean the world to not just you, but to also to your family and everyone coming behind you because you you have now start to lay a foundation that the rest of your family, the younger generation, will be able to follow. Now, Tyler, I, I love to ask uh, athletes this. I understand football. I know a lot of people's dream is to play in the NFL, to have a big, long, successful football career. But let's say that happens. Let's okay. say you go and you you dominate at Jackson State. You guys win some SWAC championships, some celebration bowls, et cetera, et cetera. You have a nice, long 10, 15 year career in the NFL. Let's just let's just say that. But at the end of football, you're still a young man. You're still in your 30s. You're still I mean, if you even if you push it to 40, you're still a fairly young man. What what are some of your plans or some of the things you like to do outside of football and, and something you'd like to get into once football is over with? Well, I'm, I'm so happy you asked that. So my I, well, also one thing that really I loved about Jackson State when I went on my official visit was I, I want to be a speech pathologist. I'm OK, a pathologist. I'm majoring in speech pathology. I'm minoring in psychology. But I'm really thinking about double majoring in both because I really want to be a therapist, especially for athletes, because I know just how much the pressure can be on them to succeed mm -hmm. as well. So I really want to be a therapist there. And I also want to work as a speech pathologist in a high school setting or in predominantly uh, black neighborhoods. That's, that's, a, that's a really it's a female dominated profession, just helping yeah. kids with speech impediments, with autism, um, speech disorders and anything like that. And well, funny enough, my mom is a speech pathologist and I used to oh. love she used to work at Wingfield high school and just seeing those kids just come up to her can like just hug her and say thank you so much for helping me you changed my life or just good like i it brings tears to my eyes it makes me so happy just her stories just how she helped those kids change like how she helped them to be better is what i want to do i want to help i want to give back at the end of the day when i'm done playing football i want to help give back i want to be a high school football coach i want to be a speech pathologist i want to be a counselor i want to write books you know outside of football I love working out. I love reading books. I love playing games. I love walking. I just, I, I want to help people at the end of the day. So, you know, I, I always say it'd be a dream come true to play in the NFL for as long as possible. But after that, I do want to go immediately and go work where God's calling me to work and where I can make the most difference. Absolutely, man. Once again, this is Tyler Brown. Hey, Jackson State, you guys got a good one on your hands. Even if, you know, whatever takes place on the football is God's will. But outside of football, man, you, you're going to do something special, man. You, you have a really good story. You, you're really eloquent. 
you definitely have broken down the things and, and you're going to make an impact on someone, a lot of someone's lives uh, moving forward. Tyler, thank you so much, man, for taking the time out your day. Once again, this is Tyler Brown, one of the latest commits to Jackson State football. Be sure to hit that thumbs up button, like, share, subscribe. Tyler, thank you so much, thank man. Thank you so much for having me. It was absolutely and, and I cannot wait. So, well, but Tyler, before we get out of here, I want to say uh, you'll be eligible this fall. And, and how many years of eligibility do you have? I know some people do want to know that kind of stuff. I will have four years of eligibility wow. left. Wow. Yeah. They're, they can't wait to see you dominate this starting this fall and for the next three, four, however long that you end up at Jackson State, man. Thanks again. Uh, and I can't wait to see you on the field this year. Thank you guys Thank for tuning you, in. Uh, and we will so see much. you next time. Thanks for having me.